I've yet to meet a parent who can honestly say they've never gotten frustrated at some point with their child. It happens to all of us, right? Something happens, we feel our child is behaving badly, we lose control, then we lash out. We may either shout at our child, we punish them, worse so, sometimes they even get a spanking, isn't it? And guess what? At the end of it all, have we really achieved anything? Zero. And you know what? We come out of it as parents feeling awful. We hate ourselves for the way we reacted. We wish we could take it all back and redo it again. But you know what happens? Two weeks later, something comes about. There's some misbehavior. Our child behaves in a way that we are not ready to accept. And the whole cycle starts all over again. Have you been there? Can you relate to what I'm talking about? I know we've all faced challenging moments with our children and what I'd like you to do right now is just take a moment, go down to the comments and just write down what has been your personal most challenging moment with your child. Now let's think about this situation that happened. Do you think any of us were building positive connections with our children? Were we parenting mindfully? Do you think you felt like you did the right thing by your child? I think we all know the answer to this. But how about if I let you in on a little secret? What if I told you that all of this can be avoided by following an approach to discipline the Montessori way? All these squabbles, all these feeling miserable by your child, by you, it can all be avoided and you can have a an enjoyable parenting journey together. I'm going to share that especially just for you. Now, before I go on, I'd like you to hit the like button and the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our future videos. So before we go forward, I want to address something. The title of this video is Discipline the Montessori Way. And let's first understand this word discipline. Most of us take it in a negative way. We hear the word discipline and we're transported back to that traditional classroom that we grew up in when we were children and we picture this strict teacher who's trying to control children, uh, discipline them through control, um, most of the time using punishment or reward to make them do things the way she wants, to make them follow the rules and obey. And I think this is a very negative approach to discipline. And what we're here to talk about today is positive discipline. Now, I'm a mother to triplet boys who are almost 19 years old. And this is something that we've practiced at home right from the get-go. And I can tell you, parenting has been very, very smooth using this technique. Now, Dr. Montessori believed that it is our responsibility as the adult, as the guide, as the parent, to help children develop discipline. It isn't something that they're born with. It's something that they have to learn. And how do we help them develop this? By giving them opportunities to learn respect, responsibility, and cooperation. And this, in turn, will lead to positive discipline. So what exactly is positive discipline? Positive discipline is a form of discipline that combines respect with rules and dignity. It gives freedom to the child with order and the ability to give the child the opportunity to make choices. And this in turn will promote behaviors that show respect for all. So in a positive discipline approach, we look at a situation and we decide the rules mutually. It shouldn't just be to my benefit as an adult or a teacher that you must do something because it works for me, but it should work for everybody. It should make sense for everybody. There should be a reason why we have this kind of a rule in order. And in this way, the child feels respected and they feel like I have a say and they feel dignified as well. For example, when we make a rule in school that we do not uh, run in the classroom. We bring a situation up and we talk to the children and we say, you know, uh, do you think it's a good idea to run in the classroom? And they discuss their reasons why they think, you know, no, I don't think it's a good idea, but why? Well, we could bump into something, we could knock somebody over, we could hurt our friend, we could hurt ourselves, and then we decide, okay, so if it's not a good idea, what kind of a rule 
can we make so that nobody runs in the classroom? And then the children come up and say, okay, well, you know, if we run in the classroom, our friends have to remind us, or they will come up with solutions for you. And in this way, there's understanding, there's communication, there is uh, respect for everybody. So we really want to uh, approach discipline with this kind of positivity. I know so many of you are watching right now and thinking, what is she talking about? Positive discipline? I can't do this. It's not possible. But relax, pause, take a breath, grab a cup of coffee because I'm going to break it down into very simple steps. It's going to make it easy for you to follow and implement. And I can tell you from experience, it works. So let's just recap what I said. Positive discipline means giving your children choices, being respectful, being kind, working together, cooperating. Positive discipline centers around respectful parenting, creating positive interactions between you and your child. And what happens is that your child wants to follow the rules. They want to have positive behavior because they love you, they respect you, they don't want to upset you because they feel respected by you. Now let me tell you how I explain this to my students when I'm teaching in class. I want you to think right now back to school days with your favorite, your most favorite teacher, all right? The teacher whose class you loved to be in, you enjoyed being with them. And if you remember, you were always well behaved in this class, right? Everything was very positive in this class because you cared about this person. They respected you and you want to show them respect back as well. And so that's why you would never misbehave in this classroom. You were happy to follow the rules. You were joyful to obey, as we call it. That's what we are aiming for through positive discipline, where our children are happy to follow rules. We don't have to bribe them. We don't have to punish them. We don't have to force them. We don't have to nag them. It happens very joyfully. Now, the reason children are able to follow rules joyfully and happily is because of a connection that you've created with them, that you've developed with them. That is the main ingredient in positive discipline, developing and building this positive connection. And I'm going to tell you how we do this in a Montessori way. Now, first things first, to make this a little bit real and easy to understand, let's picture a situation. It's getting to dinner time. Uh, you have to sit down to dinner and your child is playing with his car. So you come and you give him a, a little heads up and say, hey, guess what? It's time for dinner. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to tidy up your cars and then we'll sit down to dinner. You come back five minutes later, nothing's changed. He's racing his cars up and down the sofa as if he never heard you. But you're still patient and you say, you know what, five more minutes and tidy up and then we're going to put our stuff away and I want to see you at the dinner table. Five minutes later, guess what? Nothing's changed again. Now you get frustrated. This is where you lose your temper. I told you to tidy your toys and you never listened to me. Now I want you to just go to your room and no dinner for you or some kind of a punishment or some kind of a losing the temper or something like that, right? Did we achieve anything? No. We have an upset parent. We have an upset child. Nothing's working. That's not the way we want it to go. So let's try and do things a different way. The first thing I want you to do when you are starting positive discipline is change your perspective. Let's look at things differently. We come into this situation and what do we see? A little boy having a really good time playing with his cars. He isn't trying to defy you. He isn't here to upset you or purposely annoy you. He's just really involved in his play and he's having a good time. So put yourself in your child's shoes and try and see things from his viewpoint. When you do that, you'll be able to connect with him because you're understanding things from his viewpoint and you will be able to handle this situation differently. Your next step is to acknowledge your child's feelings. Hey, looks like you're having a lot of fun there. I really love how you've arranged your cars. But you know what? It's getting time to dinner, so I think we need about five minutes and I'd like you to tidy up and then we're going to sit at the table and have dinner. The minute your child feels that you've acknowledged him, 
you understand him, you get him, it's going to be easier for you to connect with him and it's going to be easier for him to follow the rules. So there you have steps one and two, change your perspective and step two, acknowledge your child's feelings or acknowledge the situation. Once that connection has been established, it's time for step three, offering your child some choices but with boundaries. In Montessori, we call this freedom within limits. We have a video about this and I'm going to link that in the description below and I'll link it right here so you can click and watch it later to learn more about freedom within limits. So let's take a step back and look at your statement. Wow, I really love what you've set up here with your cars, but you know what? It's getting time to dinner. I'd like to give you five minutes to tidy up and then we can sit at the table. So when you're telling your child it's time for dinner, that's your limit. At the same time, you're speaking to your child respectfully. You didn't order him, hey, I'd like you to tidy up your toys right now. We've got to get to the table, right? You did it kindly with humility, with respect. Now you need to offer the child some freedom within those limits. It could be, I'm giving you five minutes and I'd like you to tidy up. You can wash up and then come to the dinner table. Or how about we tidy up together, put our things to way, away and I'll help you to wash up and come to the table. So there you've given them two choices, two bits of freedom, but with the limit that we've got to be at the dinner table within five minutes. When you give your child these choices, what happens is that you're giving him some control over a situation. Little children are constantly battling to gain control over situations because we are always telling them what to do. And when they feel that they have a choice, then it's easier for them to comply with the rules. In this situation, he gets to feel like it's my choice and then he feels happy. He doesn't feel forced. What would be an added bonus is when you're talking to your child instead of towering above them and speaking down to them, you get down to their level, look into their eyes and speak to them face to face. It creates a better connection, it creates a closer bond and it will probably help you in uh, having your child follow the rules. Now remember, whatever your child chooses, you have to follow through with it. If they end up choosing option two, which means you have to tidy with them, that's something you got to do. But at the end of the day, it was amicable, right? It was a peaceful solution. There was no nagging, no tantrums, no crying, no fighting. And that's what we want here. At this moment, to give your child two options is enough. You don't have to go with three or four. Uh, two options is comfortable for them and what I'd like you to do is look at the big picture here all right you may not be happy that yes I had to get in there and help the child but the big picture at the end of the day our end goal is we want our child to develop self-discipline and I'm going to talk to you a little a little bit about that we're going to take a little trip again down memory lane okay so early I asked you to think about your favorite teacher and how peaceful things were, how easy discipline was in their classroom. Now I want you to think about your not so favorite teacher, one that you were a little bit afraid of. And in that classroom, there was discipline as well, but it came from a different place. It came from a place of fear that I'm afraid she'll punish me, she may mock me, she may put me down, she may, you know, put me in the corner. And because of that, I will be disciplined and I'll follow the rules because I'm scared of this teacher. Now that kind of discipline lasts as long as I'm with that teacher. The minute she's gone, my behavior will change. That is definitely not self-discipline. What we want is for the child to develop that self-discipline that is long lasting. Self-discipline comes from a feeling of mutual respect where the child wants to follow the rules. That is our goal in Montessori. This kind of discipline gets rid of all that negativity that surrounds children in terms of behavior and it leads to something that is more long lasting, something they carry throughout their years. So let's recap the three steps. Step one, change your perspective. Look at things from the outside. Don't let your feelings get in the way. Try and understand things from your child's viewpoint. Step two, acknowledge 
Try and understand where your child is coming from. Think about it. Even as adults, when we feel understood, it puts us in a better place. And step three, giving them freedom within limits, giving them a choice with a voice. Now you can see that these steps are easy, but it's definitely going to take patience and practice from your end to make it work. It isn't magic, it doesn't happen overnight. It may take you five tries or 10 tries to get this going. It's also gonna be a new way for your child. They wouldn't be used to you responding in this way. So it'll take a little bit of time, but hang in there. Like I said, I have triplets who are 19 years old and we have done this. We have you know, lived this way consistently for their entire life. And I'm so happy to say that we rarely had tantrums and outbursts. It was a very peaceful and happy journey of parenting. And that's what I want for you. And I know you can have it too. I hope you're gonna try this out and come back and leave comments on your success stories and how it worked for you. If you have questions, leave those too and I can answer them for you. There's another video I have on uh, working with children, um, uh, you know, following this kind of pattern of positive discipline. So I'm gonna link it in the uh, description below and I will also put a link here in the video so that you can watch it and I'm sure it will help you too. I would love for you to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. I'm looking forward to coming back and sharing more with you. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.